Hey, what's going on? Just getting the metronome up in case we need it. Yeah, that's too much. I think I need to sit further back. Although you don't need to see my face. <laughs> Just need to see my hands. All right, so let's see. Uh, let me get. Let me make sure I'm in tune. I think I put a new battery in this. Yeah. Just got this back. I had it. It was at the shop. And hey, John, what's going on? Hey John, what? We got the Johns are here. John John Club. Lena, good to see you. I, uh, I lied. Um, I said I was only going to introduce two new notes, the uh, open G string and the A note, and I, lo and behold, I add the F sharp. But because we have the G um, and we have an octave G to G, I thought it would be uh, a, a great way to kind of introduce uh, sharps. And there's a natural, so we're going to learn naturals, and we're going to learn that sharps last the, uh, an accidental lasts the entire bar. If you download the PDF from the Discord, which I will grab right now, uh, let's see, I will grab the uh, link to Discord if you're new here. This is the Discord link to join. It's free, doesn't cost anything. The other thing we ask is if you really try hard to use your same handle at the Discord that uh, you use uh, at YouTube so we know who you are. If the, uh, I think at Discord you can have a different handle for every um, group that you're part of. So it shouldn't be a problem if I understand that correctly. So far we don't have any, uh, any uh, admins here. Or at least they haven't chimed in. Good morning, Paul. Good to see you, man. Ah, just <laughs> first time playing guitar. See the pick guard, he put a new pick guard on. See that? Crazy, huh? Remember how bubbly it was? No longer. So it's prettier. I mean, like I never really cared about that, but it's nice not it's nice having it too. Um uh, dress the frets, and then there were four bracings that were loose inside here. So everything's nice and tight now. No more rattles. This is my main axe uh for sessions so in fact I'm going to use it today on a uh, game it's kind of country uh, kind of Western I'm actually working on three games today working on apex legends so you can all take a sip Working on a game called Watch Dogs. And then another one that I don't know what it's called. Hey, there's, there's Bruce. Yeah, I, was, I said, I, I probably should put him on the Discord, but yeah, I, I uh, uh, 
the pump broke on our fountain a while back. And so I bought a new pump and I had the gardeners help me take it apart The because it's heavy concrete pieces on the fountain. And uh, it's one of those kind of go up against the wall. And um, uh, so they helped me take it down. I, the pump showed up. I replaced it. I've cleaned everything, got everything cleaned out. And um, and then had them put, and I put the shims in the base. I was thinking that the shims were there to keep the base from wobbling. Um, so I didn't think to, to get a level and check it. <laughs> so when we put the bit, so it's a base and then a big thing and another big thing on top. And um, uh, when we when we put the, the middle section on, um, I didn't think to check, but it was tilting. And, and actually, when I look at it now, it looks like we didn't put it dead center. So I think if we moved it over, but it's so stinking heavy. Uh, if we moved it over, it might level itself out. I don't know. Uh, but I should have started. I had The shims I thought were there so that because the top part's so heavy, um, and, and as soon as I was messing with the shims before, the whole thing started to lean forward. And I went, you don't want that thing to fall forward. It would kill somebody. Um, it took three of us to lift it into place. So I thought, oh, well, that's why the shims are there. So when I put the shims back, I thought they were there. I put them back so that the everything was flush up against the wall, like really, I'm, I'm distorting a little bit here. I'm going to turn down just a little bit. Um, and so that's the story of the fountain. So now, but it, it's all tilted and water's going everywhere. So, so the gardeners will be here on Friday now. They'll change to Friday, I believe. They, hopefully they start this week. And I'll have them, I'll give them some extra coin this week because I feel bad. I mean, it literally takes them 30 seconds. They're so strong. Um, but the three of us get, get the, get the parts down and then I'll start from scratch. And then if, if I can get it shimmed while they're still here, then great. I'll have them help me put it back together or what? Otherwise it'll wait a week. So that's what Bruce and I have been texting about. Hey, so I should do some shout outs. Uh, you know, there is no drain. The, there is no drain. It's just recycling water. Uh, there are drains all over my property because I've got a big pool and a jacuzzi. I mean, like a giant pool. Uh, this pool is so big. <laughs> it's like, why do I have such a big pool? Uh, and it was the only house we looked at that had a pool. Because I, I managed a building for 25 years, lived in it for 32. And I, you know, we just didn't want to get a pool. But we kind of, we like this property and now we love it. Love it, so... Um, okay, so good to see Holly. Holly was cutting weeds uh, because it was going to get hot. And you got to cut those weeds because you don't want the fire season to rush down your hill and hit your house. Um, and um, the uh, um, then it promptly snowed. <laughs> right, Holly? So you still had to weed. It's been cool here. I mean, we had... Yeah, the last couple of days we're in the 90s, like 90, 91. Um, and we're, we've been getting down to the 50s every night and highs in the 70s, low 80s. So it's been a wonderful spring. We haven't had any hot weather at all. So I'm so stoked. Uh, I know our weather is different than yours, Holly. Sometimes you're hotter than we are. I always think because we're further south that we're going to be hotter than you are. But I'm always amazed at how hot Redding gets. Um, it's way up there. So... Um, let's see. Okay. Who all here? Sorry. I, I know you're expecting a lesson and here I am just chatting. It's, this is the, this is the, the detriment of only doing one lesson a week, right? So I said hi to John and John, Lena. I said, hi, Paul. I said hi to you. So why am I, why even mention that? Jack, hey, how's it going? Ed, Bob Schuman, Sam Stamos, uh, Bruce, Dennis. Hey, we got all the moderators here. Uh, I'm here. She, YouTube would not show me the chat stream for like four minutes. Oh, crazy. Oh, so you were here and I was saying, where are the moderators? And Holly's screaming at the TV screen, at the computer screen. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm not skipping anybody. John, uh, Jan. Oh, Bruce. And I, okay. Yeah, I think I got everybody. Who else? Okay, that's it. Everybody that's at least logged into the the chat so um just as a review we did the e string all of these so far this is five right so all of these pdfs are up 
I mean, print them up, make a book, put them in a book. It's awesome. Um, you're, it's like having a free learn how to read music for guitar book. Uh, and maybe when this is all done, um, I can put them all into one PDF or something, and then I can upload it and sell it or something. I don't know. Um, but, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what, what I've been doing. Uh, let's see. So we did B, then, I'm sorry, E, B, then we did E and B. And when we learned B, we learned a little bit about ties, which I didn't re really use today. Uh, we'll bring, we'll, we'll bring that back into play soon. And we combine the two. And we did dyads. So you can start to, start to see that two note thing. Or start to see stacked notes and not be afraid of them. I mean, it's pretty scary when you see six notes stacked. I've seen seven and eight. And I'm like, you know I only have six strings. <laughs> uh, and then today is the uh, E, G, or yeah, the G. We've got the, we're adding the G string, no jokes, and to the B and E string. And so I'm just doing single notes, no chords. But uh, next week I'll do... We'll do three note chords. So we'll be able to do some triads now, now that we have three strings. Um, and I also introduced the, the F sharp or the notion of a sharp, so we can talk about that. If you have the PDF, you'll notice at the far left um, on the second stave, it says G mixolydian scale. And on the third stave, it says G major scale. So just, just so you, you know, you might be able to just read this using the numbers or whatever, but that's a mixolydian scale. That's a major scale. So the only difference is the seventh note, the, what we call the seventh degree. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that would be the seventh of a G7. If you wondered where that came from. Um, and there's the root. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And in, and in uh, uh, Mixolydian, the, the, the difference between a Mixolydian and a major scale is just that the seventh is flatted. In this case, it's an F natural, so it's it doesn't sound like it's flatted, at least in nomenclature. But, uh, but pitch-wise, it does because if you compare that to the the G major scale, it definitely there's the G major scale it has that really strong leading tone. Okay, that F sharp leads to G. And the nice thing about cutting off my head here is that my hair can be all messy. <laughs> <laughs> it won't matter. Um, but that definitely now, in comparison to the G major, the G mixolydian does sound like a... F uh, sounds like a, um, uh, a flat 7 now, right? It does sound more minory or more flatty or more bluesy. Um, in fact, that's a, the G mixolydian is a great scale to use over a G7 chord, which would be like the one chord in a G blues. So you could use these notes right there, and sorry about the double bar at bar six. I, I didn't realize that was there until just now, so ignore that. Um, but um, you can um, you can use those notes to practice jamming over a G seven chord. Um, also, you could use the G major scale, which we're going to learn in a second. Uh, we're going to read in a second. You already know it, kind of. Um, but you could use that over G. any kind of G major progression. Uh, so, all right, uh, what, what else? So, and when we learn the D string, I might then bring in the B flat so we can do a D minor scale. Um, so we might, that might be our first exposure to a flat, um, very common flat, B flat's the first flat of all the flats, F sharp is the first sharp of all the sharps. So, uh, G being the fifth mode of C major, thus no sharps or flats. G mixolydian, G major scale, uh, is missing the F3 on the staff. Did I mess up somewhere? Let's see, wait. G being the fifth one. G major scale. 
missing the F sharp on the step. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, there's uh, um, there G mixolydian has no F sharp, but G major is F sharp. G major is the um, in the circle of fifths. It's the next scale after C. If you go up a fifth from C, you get G, and now that now you've got the key with one sharp. I did a whole circle of fifths thing way at the beginning over a year ago of our lessons. So okay, so let's let's just uh, let's just. Jump in here and work on 18 minutes in here. Well, not 18 minutes. 18 after the hour, but actually, how far are we into this? How do I know? Oh, 15 minutes in. <laughs> Spent time. I just wasted 10 seconds trying to figure out where I was in the video. <laughs> okay, so if you hit the open G string here, that's G. And that note is written there on the second line from the bottom, okay? That's G. Now again, what I would do is I would maybe print this up a couple times, maybe three times, print up maybe 10 of them if you want, um, and do, do one where you just write the letter names on the notes as kind of a little quiz for yourself. Um, you guys can send it to each other and check each other's work if you want. That's <laughs> like you're in class. I'm fine with that. Um, the other then, uh, But I would not use that one to practice your sight reading. The whole idea of sight reading is for you to learn to read those notes on the staff not to read letter names. Letter names don't really do any good once you get to an octave because it says G and you go, oh, G. But really what you mean is this G. So those two Gs are different. They're different octaves. Um, so uh, again, I don't have a problem with you writing the letter names or even the fret numbers, although that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, I wouldn't do that either because again, you're just, you're gonna give yourself a cheat code and um, you don't want to cheat. You wanna be able to read music. The whole point is the whole point of this exercise is is to come out of here with the ability to maybe pick up a classical book or a jazz book or play with any other musician other than a guitar player because they all read music. Piano players, flute players, sax players, trumpet players, bass players, uh, string players, they all read music. So if they say, hey, let's play something together, they're going to hand you something that looks like this. They're not going to hand you tab. So. I mean, I, I don't really know that I have too much of a trouble to come up with. Reading. Now, again, I, you know, doing what I do, and I, I have literally three games to play on today, three different games I, I have to work on. And this is just like one day's work right here. Um, you can see this is a, a from a TV show, you know. So being able to read uh, music comes in handy in my business. Uh, and there are a couple guys in town that are very, very successful that can't read a lick. You can see. Um, but, uh, and you can see a lot of these are short little snippets, right? They're not like pages and pages of one. It's, here's just, you know, I print them up based on a lot of times off the MIDI. Um, hey, Judith. Um, and so reading music for me is a daily endeavor. So, and, and it is one of those things I do feel like if you don't use it, you're going to lose it. And so this is a great way to have some materials to get out and practice every now and then and practice reading. Um, and then as you're doing this, you can work on other skills. If this is super easy for you, uh, one of the things I suggest is don't play it in open position. Move it up the fretboard. Okay. Um, you can play it up here. So if you want to work on your reading up the neck, that's great. The other thing you can do is you could start working on your uh, your picking. So you could do practice your alternating picking. If you look at bar 21, we have quarter notes. We still haven't done eighth notes yet. Um, when we get to eighth notes, that's when I would really start implementing upstrokes. But so far in all of the lessons we've done, you could play everything we've done with just a simple downstroke on the right hand. So we haven't really talked too much about the right hand mechanics, just left hand stuff, okay? So again, let's go to the top top line of music there, and we're just learning the two notes on the G string that are non-sharp, non-flat notes, okay? Um, thank you, Bruce. Appreciate that. Yeah, it was over well, well over a year ago. Um, okay, so we have G is open, and then on the second line from the bottom, second finger, put your second finger on this note, second line, uh, space from the bottom, sorry. And if you remember from grade school, if you did the spaces from the bottom to the top, it would be F-A-C-E. You can always use that to remember. It spells the word face. Um, if you do the lines from the bottom, every good boy deserves fudge or every good boy does fine is what I learned. 
Um, but that would be a way to memorize the, the lines, okay? And that gets you nine notes. It gets you four spaces and five lines. And with that, um, you, you're going you're gonna to be fine pretty much in here. But the, you notice that G note up here, we learned it the first day. That's not one of those nine notes. It's above the staff. And we have notes that go above it. It's like, well, how do you do that? Well, you write what's called ledger lines. And we'll talk about that at some point. We're going to get those soon because as soon as we go to the A string, we're going to need ledger lines to be able to, to notate the, the bottom two strings. Okay? And ledger lines are basically just a miniature staff continuing down. Okay? You, you know, you've, you'll know them when you see them if you, if you don't know them. Okay. So there's the G. It's just open. And then second finger on the second fret is A. All right? So we can play this first line. I'll play it. I'll use the metronome. Let me get that volume all the way up. Two, three, four. I'll loop it. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Open. Two, four. Two, four. Again. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, A, G. Again, G, two, three to A, four. Two, three, G, A, A, G. Okay, now the next line is just going to be a review of the, those two notes and all the notes we've learned so far. So if you remember, uh, we know G and A, open and two. If you remember B, C, and D were open, first fret and third fret, and E, F, G were also open, first fret and third fret, okay? So play that with me, open G, second fret, open B, first fret C, third fret D, open E string, and then first fret F, third fret G. Okay, so let me loop this, and we're just, all right, let me put the click on, hey Richard, we're gonna put the click on, and uh, I'm just gonna loop that line, so bar five through eight. Here we go, two, Three, four, two beats each. Two, B, C, D, E, F, G, back down to low G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Again, G, to A. Two, four, two, four, two, and four. Again, one more time. G, two, A. Open, first fret, third fret, open. Let's go backwards. G to F, E, D, C, B. Now I can give you a little quiz here. Play a C note. Okay, play an E note. Okay, play one of the G's. And if you need to use the sheet of paper to find it, that's fine. Okay, play an A. Play a B note. Okay, now D. And F. We can outline a G7 chord by playing the G, the open B, the D at the third fret of the B string, and then the F, right? It basically, is all the notes that are in a G7 chord. G, B, D, and F. All right, now the only difference between... Um, the, the second stave and the third stave is that we've added the F sharp. So notice um, when I call it an F sharp with a letter, it, the sharp is after the letter. But when we're notating it in music, the sharp is actually before the note. So that's a little thing that I've noticed. But uh, not a big deal. But F sharp, so if this is F, when you sharpen a note, you raise it. Okay, on piano, it would be going from uh, you know a white key to a black key maybe. Um, but in this case, we're going from the first fret to the second fret, okay? So F sharp is right here. 
And when we play it this way, this now, the what was a G mixolydian scale becomes a G major scale. So it has more resolution. It, it just sounds a little happier, a little less bluesy, a little more resolution. Okay? So play everything with me. We go open G. So we're playing the third line. The A, then open B, then C at the first fret, D at the third fret, open E, F sharp, and then G. Okay, F sharp is the second fret. Play that. G again. Oh, you like that calling out the notes? Okay, <laughs> I'll do it again. Play an E. Play an F. Play an F sharp. Play a G. So that's a little chromatic snippet. Okay. Uh, e, F, F sharp, G. I actually was thinking about doing a video on chromatic scales and their use. Um, so if you're playing over like a C chord, that's a... Uh, that's... Um, is that Thelonious Monk? I don't think so. That's... All blue? No, not all blues. Shoot, what's that called? I want to call it Blue Monk, but that's not Blue Monk. Anyway, think of the name of that. Put it in the comments and I'll go, dang it, I should know that. Played it a thousand times. Um, okay. Anyway, we're going to we're gonna see that. Uh, I think I put that somewhere together. You can see it on uh, measure 29. Okay. Now, so let's play this. Uh, I'm going to turn the click on. We're going to loop bar 9 through 12 at that tempo. Okay. So we're going to play a G major scale. And again, if you download the PDF on the far left, you'll see it says G major scale and above it G mixolydian scale. I always like to throw in a little theory as well. I think it ultimately helps you understand things, but the terminology the, may get a little, little overwhelming at times. But okay, here we go. Two, three, uh, one, two, three, four, bar nine. Two, four, open B. C, G, E, F sharp, G. Again, low G, A, open B, first fret, third fret, open, second fret, G, and then open G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, open G, B, C, D, E, A, hey, Pepper, good to see you, sorry, just now noticing you, again. And again, if this is too easy for you, you can practice reading it, and again, this is not really reading because I've got the, the, the fingering and I've got the letter name there. So these first three lines of music, I wouldn't say it's going to help you read too much. It's, it's more educational purposes, okay? Not for drilling. Now, the rest of the page is for drilling, okay? It's for starting to learn some of this stuff. And I put double bars in, except I screwed up and left the double bar in from last week uh, in bar six. Ignore that one. But I put generally double bars in. To, so that you can think of these as each individual exercise. Don't think of the whole page as your exercise because that can be a little bit overwhelming. So like if you look at bar 13, there's a double bar at the end of bar 20. So you got you got six bars. Is the exercise essentially. Um, and um, you can loop that. Um, you can practice that and when, and not move on until you have it down if you want, and then move on to the next one. Um, I probably should have put a, a double bar at the end of bar 24, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm just, it, I, I didn't even look at the double bars. Again, those were left over from, I 
cleared the, I erased the chalkboard essentially in finale and then just forgot about the double bar stuff. So, okay. So let's, let's look at bar 13. All right. Now we don't have, and this is where you might want to print up an extra copy, uh, extra hard copy and write in the notes so you can practice the, that because it's, you're, you're learning two things. Well, three things you're learning. Well, no, two things, basically. <laughs> You're learning what note that is. That first note of bar 13, that's a G, and you're learning where it is, okay? The next note is B, okay? That's here. We've had that. We've worked on B now for three weeks. So you should have that one down. And then A is another one of the new notes. So you're learning two things. You're learning where the, what the note's called there and then where it is on the guitar. Um, and ultimately, that's what every musician has to learn. And if you go to a different instrument, Hey, I already know how to read the music, but I have to find where it is on the clarinet or whatever. Some of you play clarinet. So it's, you know, like, oh, I could read this on clarinet, no problem, but on guitar. So it's the same kind of thing. You already know the notes, but you don't know where they are. So those are the two pieces of information that you're, you need to, you need to learn in this. And so just, just kind of play a section, in this case, these eight bars uh, a few times until you kind of like can do it and try not to memorize. That's almost impossible, but Try not to memorize it. Try to read it. Try to keep your eye moving. As soon as you hit that G note, you should be looking at the B note. As soon as you hit that B note, you should be eyeing the next note. And eventually, you'll be able to eye two, three, four, five notes ahead. Eventually, you'll be able to look at a whole phrase and just go, oh, I know what it is. You know, that kind of thing. So, okay. So here we go. I'm not going to use the metronome. I'm going to maybe go slower, maybe go faster. I have no idea. One, two, three, G. To open B, then A, to C, B, open B, to D, open E on top, open B, and then down to A, the new note, oops, to C, E, D, C, B, open B, the new note A, and the new note G. So again, we're going to do that again in a second. Um, and sorry, I don't have my light. The battery was dead. So I, I, I'm, the charging, I'm charging the batteries right now for that thing. Um, but uh, that does help to see my where my hands are placed. Um, so Catherine, what are you saying? I've been playing up a storm lately. Also, yeah, it's fun when you get a little jump in your ability. I got a new instrument too, by the way. So I'll show you that in a little bit. Remind me if I don't if I don't think of it. It's not a new instrument. It's new, but it's not. I've, I've got one of these already. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where I never thought I'd own five basses, what, six ukuleles and five banjos? <laughs> never. I didn't think I'd own one of any of those. Uh, but now I have two ouds. <laughs> so I'm going to show you my new oud. My nude. <laughs> All right. So now I have to say that this, this, uh, <laughs> this video is not safe for children. Okay, here we go. Uh, again, bar 13 all the way to bar 20. Let's see if we can get this down. One, two, three, four. G, B, A to C, B, D, E, B, A, C, E, G, or I'm sorry, D, C, B, A, G. All right. I'm going to loop it. Three, four. One, two, four. Two. Sorry. I got off on the metronome. I want to get the right click. One, two, bar 13. Yeah. 
again. A to C B Look ahead E B Look down There we go E And the goal is to not look at your hands. If you look at your hands you're going to lose where you are on the music, okay? That's a That's a a, a big a big trick to help you uh uh, read better um, and not lose your place. Um, and one of the one of the keys, one of the things I do when I get a chart. Um, now, see, like some of these charts. Like, well, this is just two notes. There's only two notes on this page. Although this is in bass clef. Um, but if I have something that's a little bit more involved, is that not that one? That one's really involved. And that one, I, this one, this really complex one here, I, I punched in in phrases. I didn't sight read this down. Um, I don't know that I could have. Um, although I can play it, but sight reading that, um, actually, that's a lot easier to read than the chart I created myself. Um, but something like this where you've got, you know, notes around all around the staff, um, you find find where you can play all of the notes that are in the music in one position. So if the highest note is this C way up here and the lowest note is A flat down here or whatever, then if you if you keep your hand in here, you'll always be able to get any note that's in the music, and you will never have to look at your hands. So that's the first thing I do is I look for the highest note on this chart and I look for the lowest note on the chart. And in this case, the highest note is the, this G up here and the lowest note is this G here. We're talking about open position, so we're golden. Um, but if it's something like that where I've got this A flat and this C up here, then I just make sure my hand's here. And then as I'm reading, um, then I just kind of keep my hand in that position. I never have to look. I never have to look at my hands. Uh, and so that's that's a really good uh, trick, and especially if the music is complex. Anyway, all right. So let's move on. Bar twenty one. We're gonna we're just gonna do some quarter notes here. Very very simple. Four Gs. Um, four A's, two B's, two A's, and three G's, okay? So I'm just going to go ahead and write in on this, and you can join in when you think you've got it, okay? The bar 21, we're just going to play to the end of that line to bar 24 and then repeat it, okay? I should have put a double bar there. You can write one in there if you want. Two, three, what's two, three, four. <laughs> simple one. So that might be encouraging. You go, oh, hey, I can read that. I can play that. I, that's good. That's why I put it there. I probably should have moved that closer to the top, at least above the one that we just did, because uh, it's very, very simple. But um, okay, now the next one we're doing, we're going to, if you look at the, you, in, in, this, just do these next four bars. If you look at the four bars, the second note in every bar is this open G. Okay. So right there, that makes it pretty simple. Now you just got to read the top note, the, the first note in every bar. So the first note is G, then F, and then E, and F sharp, okay? Now melodically, this isn't really gonna sound like much, uh, So, but that's part of what makes it a good reading exercise because it makes it less likely that you're gonna memorize it because it sounds like something. Part of the reason, there's two reasons why I don't use um, melodies, you know, like Happy Birthday or Twinkle Twinkle or whatever. One is because of uh, copyright issues, but the second one is because you already know those melodies. And so you'll be tempted to use your ear instead of use your your reading ability, your mind, in learning something new. Okay, So I'm trying to give you melodies and ideas and uh, phrases that you probably wouldn't hear in a natural world. <laughs> okay, so, so this is what this sounds like. The G up high, 2, and then a low G, and an F, 2. And then E, 2, and 
two, and then F sharp, two. Kind of eerie almost. Two, two, four, two, four, two, four, two, four. F, open G, open E, open G again. F sharp, second fret, two. Okay? I know it's weird, but it's a good exercise. Alan showed up for the weird melody. Just in time. Okay, let me do it with a click. Four. Oops. Two, three, four. Two, four. Two. This is a good exercise also for helping you grab strings out of thin air because we're having to skip a string. So you're probably going to hit the B string more than once accidentally. But this is almost by itself is a good exercise just to practice string skipping, especially without looking at your hands. Two, four, two. What sounds like Star Trek or something? All right, John's got a question. Uh, the dentist has a question. When you're playing notes in the areas other than the first position, in addition to seeing the highest and lowest note, uh, can you also visualize the cage form? Or whatever? Yeah, you can totally do that. Um, a lot of times, if I look through the music and I see no accidentals, meaning if the song's in the key of A flat, and we're going A to you know A flat to C, and the song's in A flat major, and I look through and I see no weird notes or anything like that, then I can just kind of play through the A, a flat major scale right there, and I know, okay, this is going to be my territory. This is going to be my my target notes are all going to be in there. Yeah, I think Judith has been here before, haven't you, Judith? You're not totally new. So yeah, and in that case, I'm actually visualizing this E form, um, but I still have to read the notes. So uh, the the reason for visualizing the form is just so that my fingers are less surprised by melody notes as they come. Uh, even if there are some notes that are outside the key, like for example, if it does that chromatic thing, it's a, a D natural instead of a, a D flat only. You know, if it goes C D flat D natural to E flat. Then I know, okay. Um, and then there's other times too where I might, like I could go um, like that if I want to stick to my rule of, okay, I'm going to stay between these two frets. But if musically, if musically it makes more sense to go like that, or, you know, um, if it sounds better on the instrument, then I will obviously do what's best, especially if I'm not like reading on by the seat of my pants. If I'm barely hanging on reading wise, then I'm probably not going to make it, I'm not gonna take those musical elements and insert those as much in. Um, like for example, if it went like that, I might go if I had time to think about it. But if I'm sight reading, I might go like that. You know, I might not. I might not insert those musical things. But a lot of times, for one thing, orchestra players don't do that because they wouldn't all know to do the same thing. If it's not written, they don't do it. So because you got you got 20 violins, first violins playing together, you got, you know, or say 14 first violins playing together, another 14 second violins playing together. You got 14 violas playing together, you got 10 cellos, and you've got six basses. Um, and they have to play together. Um, I'm always amazed. Sometimes I, th I think they put in uh, uh, bow direction marks, and I think sometimes it's just obvious if you've been playing for a long time. It's like, oh yeah, that's a that's a, you know, depends on where the phrase starts and everything. Uh, but I'll, you'll watch an orchestra and their bows are all moving together. I'm like, how do they do that? It's almost like a choreographed dance. Uh, but they do actually have bow marks in their music sometimes. Uh, same thing we would have alternating picking, like down up, down up, down up. But you wouldn't, if you ever got music for guitar and you were playing in a session or whatever, they would never give you picking direction notation. That's totally up to you. Um, and so um, just a little heads up there. Um, like I said, I've got, let's see. 
Um, okay. Let's see. I'm just checking. All right. Good. All right. So we're good right now. I think I've got some music up that I've got to work on, but I, I can do. I, don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. Not yet. Okay. So um, my daughter just got the timing belt changed on her car <laughs> Monday and Tuesday. The timing belt broke. So the bad part. Okay. Now, um, oh, you read my mind. E form theme. Yeah, yeah. It just yeah. Having knowing the the, the cage shapes up and down the neck definitely centers yourself when you're trying to read up the neck. Um, and uh, oh, what I was going to say was when when you're recording in a big session with a lot of musicians, usually you do a run through. Um, you run through the piece, and it, you know it could be thirty seconds, it could be five seconds. Um, I've played cues that were just right, like bumpers go into commercial kind of cues, um, and that's what those are called, music cues in a TV show or a movie, even in a game. I think they're called that. Um, I played on two cues for a, a TV show called Why Women Kill, um, and um, I played one was a short one, and one was a really long one Fe totally features that was the one I showed you that was like really complex uh, totally features um, uh, featured guitar so uh, apparently it turned out well I recorded from home uh, I think the orchestra was in the studio but I recorded from home um, the the uh, so getting a chance to run through it you might in that in that time you go oh well, this isn't that hard okay I will put some musicality to it as a guitar player you can do that uh, as an you know if you in fact when you when they see a guitar they expect to hear bends and slides and hammer-ons and things like that uh, because it's something it's one of it's those kind of things that you know pianos can't do um, and other instruments can't do some of the stuff that we do so. Um, but when you're trying to sight read something, that makes it a little more difficult. Okay, so let's go to uh, measure 29. This is fairly easy because it's all, almost all half notes. So I, mean, I tried to keep this easy for you because we are learning three strings and we are learning sharps and flats. Now, something's going to happen in bar 31. Um, just so you know, when, when you have, you'll notice, okay, first off, notice, look at the very top, look at every line, look at that treble clef, right? That curly Q thing at the beginning of every, every line. After the treble clef, you would see the key signature. Well, there's nothing there. There's a 4-4. Four, four, that tells you the time. Uh, but there's no key signature. So we're in the key of C. If there's no sharps, no flats, we're in the key of C. So that means G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Those are all in the key of C. Um, or A minor, if you want to think of it. But that, it's not. We, we, you wouldn't call it that. You'd call it key of C. All right. Um, so F sharp is outside of the key. So anytime you want an F sharp, you have to add what's called an accidental. And that's the sharp sign, which we're very familiar with, um, which looks like the number sign or the hashtag sign or the pound sign. It's, it's, been, it's been called many, many things. Um, and now everybody sees it as a hashtag. It's so funny. I still think of it as a number sign or pound. Um, but you can't write number one on, on a social media post because it'll because it'll do hashtag one. <laughs> like, I don't want a hashtag one. I just, I just want to put we're number one. So um, anyway, that uh, it, we, we saw it in bar 25. OK, I mean, in, in bar 28, we saw that F sharp. That accidental will only last to the end of the bar. OK, so in this case, four beats. So once you get to that next bar, if you look down there at bar 29, there's an F. That it's still it's an F. It's not an F sharp. Okay, but you look at bar 30 and there's an F sharp, and that sharp's going to carry to the end of the bar. It doesn't carry over. That's why for the the first note of bar 31, I had to put a sharp there. Okay, so you're there's a lot to learn here, um, but. That again, that sharp there is carrying to the end of the bar, but the next note, we don't want F sharp, we want F natural. So we have to do this that little thing that's called a natural sign. It kind of looks like a sharp. I always had a hard time making it in music. Sharps are easy to make, flats are easy to make, but the natural sign is always really hard to make when you're handwriting music. 
Um, and there is no way to create a natural sign um, on the keyboard that I know of, but sharps and flats are easy to do. Uh, you wouldn't normally put F natural. You wouldn't say, you know, it's just written that way. So, um, so bar 31 is F sharp, 2, and an F natural. All right? Uh, because, again, again, because that sharp sign carries, that accidental carries to the end of the bar. And you ha if you don't want it anymore, you have to negate it. Essentially, that's what the natural sign does. It negates that sharp. The natural sign also would carry for the rest of the bar. Um, if so, if we were in the key of G and we had an F sharp and we wanted an F for an entire bar, we could put a natural sign on the F and it would carry to the end of that bar. Uh, but then by, when you get to that next bar, the F sharp comes back. If you have an F in there, it's sharp. Um, it doesn't need to be notated. We're going to talk about that too when we get into key signatures. Um, I'm really trying hard not to confuse y'all. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so here we go. Let's do this. Uh, we're bar 29. It's just a chromatic kind of thing. Two, we're going to go two, three, four, E. Two to F, first fret. F sharp, second fret. G, third. F sharp, second. F natural. E. And then D, down on the third fret, second string. And then back to E. Here, let me go with a metronome because I'm going faster than the metronome. Four. Two. D on the third fret, and then back to E. So we're just repeating bar 29 to 32. F sharp, E, D. Open E. F sharp, open E, D. Good, okay, very good. Uh, the next line, we're going to do a similar thing we did before, but we went to... Uh, uh, right, we used the G as kind of a drone. Um, we're going to do it again in bar 33, it looks like. So if you look at bar 33, um, and let's go all the way to the end of 30, uh, 40. So two lines, okay? So from 33 to the double bar, um, we're going to have a G two. G on every other note is going to be G for a minute. For the first four bars, and then we're going to do kind of the same thing with A. And I might not let that A ring out because it's only a half note. And then okay, so we're I'm on bar 33. Let's uh, go slowly through it. Open G, all right, then second fret, then open G, hey, Aslan. Open G again, open B, open G again, open C, I'm not sorry, open C, C, first fret, open G, D, all right, then we're gonna go to A, second fret, on the G string, then open B, and then A, second fret, first fret C, Okay, second fret A, and then third fret D, and then A to E on top, and then A again, and then G. All right, so that's the phrase. I'm just going to loop it. Um, I'm going to knock us down to 75, a little slower. All right, what the heck? Somebody actually calling me? No, all scams. I don't, I actually want to get rid of my phone. <laughs> I think I just need a... A text machine. I don't need a phone machine anymore. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right. Back to the metronome. There we go. So 70. I slowed it down just a little bit. Oh, so. No. No. John, that's not what I said. The it only An accidental only lasts to the end of the bar which is four beats. And if it's the last note of the bar, it doesn't last any further than that bar. The bars of those lines going vertical. Okay, not the double bar. The double bar is the two lines going. It's just one. So yeah, it an accidental only lasts, whether it's a sharp, a natural, or a flat, it only lasts to the end of the bar. And then everything goes back to the, the original key. 
And in this case, we're in the key of C because we have no sharps, no flats, okay? Yeah, not all other bars, just the bar. Yeah. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, Aslan, yes, you still get paid for a full day's work. That's one of Jesus' uh, least popular uh, parables. The worker that shows up at the end of the day still gets paid, full day's wage. In other words, you can still, <laughs> you can still come to Christ when you're 91. <laughs> it doesn't matter how old you are. He'll still take you into heaven with him. So, okay. Um, all right. So, yeah, well, you, John, you only misunderstood probably because I over-explained. All right. So I'm going to hit, well, now we're, like I said, 70, a little slower. Ooh, that's louder. Just tilting it like that made it louder. I got to clean out the little holes on my phone. They're like really full of lint and dust from my pockets. Okay, here we go. 33, 2, 3, 4. Bar, just loop it. Practice that last bar. That's another thing you do when you're handed some music. You look for the high note, the low note, you look for any accidentals, and you also look for anything that might give you problems. It may not be something fast, it may just be something that's really difficult to finger. So you have to you have to learn to be pretty quick at seeing those kind of things. Now, I do most of my sessions from home, so I can take all the time I want. So it really doesn't doesn't matter. Although usually I'm charging by the hour, and I try not to take advantage of that. Seven A B A C A. Here's the last bar. cover on the holes, but it, it broke off on my phone, my phone cover. Like, constantly was, oops, sorry. 33, A, open G, open B, open G again, to C, first fret, G, open, or D, third fret, now A, second fret, to C. So this, oh, sorry, I messed up. It's, I was getting ahead of myself here. Bar 37, 2, 3, A, to B, A, C, A, you know, and the slower tempos too, I think makes it harder to memorize, because it's not, it, it seems like forever from the beginning to the end, so, you know, if you were to, if you were to play this, You would start to see some patterns. Uh, is it? What is it? <laughs> That'd be hard. Not sure how I would finger that if I was had to play it that fast. Uh, 
you can hear, but you can at a faster speed, you can start to hear the pattern. But at a really, really slow speed, you don't really hear the pattern. Okay, the last, um, the last bar is just a little melody. It's a little weird because oh, I thought they weren't coming until Friday. Well, that kind of messes up my plans. Uh, uh, so I, yeah, I apologize for the crazy. You may have to, you have to lay, of course, if you're going really slow, you can put second finger here and then jump the second finger to the F sharp. But here's a case, uh, John, where you're going to see, um, you're going to see where the F sharp carries to the end of the bar. Okay. The, uh, if you look at bar 43, which is a second from the last bar. Okay. Um, there's an F sharp, um, and it's not natural in the key. The key has no F sharp. Where the key is C, there's no sharps, no flats. And so, the F sharp um, is there, and then we have another F sharp at the end of the bar, and it's still F sharp. You don't revert back to F natural. It stays F sharp. You don't need to put a sharp sign there. Because again, that sharp sign is good to the end of that line. But then in bar 44, which is the last one, then everything reverts back to whatever the key is. <laughs> yeah, I was I actually was expecting them on Friday. They said they wanted to start coming on Friday. So um, anyway, so we're, uh, oh, well, I guess we could play that last one. Um, I'll, I'll just loop it for a minute here. You can kind of get a sense for it. Three, four. I'm real tempted to rewrite this because I don't like that last interval. This one here. I mean, I guess it's good exercise. You can lay down your finger if you want. Like that, two, four. I can smell the grass clippings. That last, second to last bar is basically D7 to G. I'm trying to make it kind of musical, you know, like you can almost like. Instead of C major 7, you think of first bar is G. All right. Okay. So, so there's the lesson. So if you're uh, if you're only here for that, you can you can log out uh, again. Go to the I pin the Discord link. You can go to the Discord, join for free. That's a, an invite. Um, and you can download every PDF and every JPEG or ping that I've created for all of these lessons, all 207 of them. Well, maybe not all 207. I don't know when we start doing this, but it goes back pretty far. If I, I'm on the, I see the page right now here. If I scroll back, let's see, what's the first date that we see? I mean, there is a lot of information up there. You could write a book with all that information and not give me a penny. Oh, yeah, Pepper was posting stuff up there, too. So at first, ever, everybody else was posting things up there. I'm not sure. Uh, uh, Kathy was posting. Kathy Bell, Miss Kathy Bell. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of grooves, strumming grooves and everything. I mean, it goes back, it's, the first one was over a year ago. Uh, but these are mostly links to this, some of that stuff. But then eventually you see my postings. So once you see my postings, that's pretty much it stayed that way 
from then on out. I think they, I think Dennis, you changed the name of it so that it would just be for stuff I'm posting. Um, okay, so let me see. Boom, I go to this. All right, go full screen. No, I, Sam, I wouldn't call this in the key. I wouldn't call that thing in the key of G. That you, you talking about this music? No, we're in the key of C. This is all key of C, except where the Zach's and Elms are, you know. So yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't overthink it. I wouldn't overthink it. Uh, we're in the key of C, and then, uh, and you know, the two most common accidentals in the key of C are going to be B flat and A sh or F sharp because those are the adjacent keys. The key below C is F and it has a B-flat in it. The key above C is G, and it has an F-sharp in it. So, um, so the next occurrence of that following measure will be an F-net. Yes. It, yeah. Once you get to the bar, everything resets. I mean, I've had entire bars that was nothing but accidentals, and then when you get to the next bar, everything resets. I mean, anytime you, you're playing a song, you know, and it's like, you know, it's gone. You know, something like that, you're going to have a lot of accidentals. But once it kicks back into this, then they don't have to keep doing the accidentals. So, all right, let's see. Um, So what I got was a flat, you can see a flat bodied oud, which means I don't have, it's not rolling off my lap, which is nice. Um, it also, God bless it, has geared tuners. So I, I don't have to deal with friction tuners anymore. And it's got a pickup, and really a cool thing is the tuner, which you use to tune, but you can also use it while you play to make sure your note that you're playing, because it's fretless, it's in tune. The only thing is that the sonically, and I, I filmed the unboxing of this, but they sent me uh, much better strings because when you buy like works particularly world instruments the strings they tend to put on particularly cheap instruments are going to be pretty pretty garbage so these are still stretching out Yes, yeah, Sam, how did you get the natural sign? Did you copy and paste it, or is it a... Yeah, it's, it's not a bad, I mean, it's a cheap instrument. It's probably not worth what I spent. I got here pretty fast from Istanbul, and I did a test last night with the two my my more traditional oud with the big round back and the and the uh, friction tuners, the peg tuners. around with Scott Jacobs in appreciation how you doing my friend yes the, all the sheet music um, all, all of these are all up in discord all right uh, 
Yeah, so it's, you know, it's not bad. It's flat back. Uh, it's weird. The top feels like, I don't know what kind of wood it is. I, it's wood. These are kind of basically just glued in there. Or these are plastic. So it's not like it's, it's not, I could easily spend $5,000 on a quality oud. I would love to, I would love to find a quality oud with these kind of, you know, I would love to get a, I don't mind the back so much as I mind the friction tuners. Um, and the pickup is not a bad option because I can plug it in. And I did in my video that I did, I don't know if I'll post it yet or not, but um, on the video I did, it um, it has uh, um, it has uh, which call um, uh, shoot, what was I talking about? <laughs> I got a text I got to deal with, um, but yeah, it's it's I can I can plug this in and get some cool sounds with it. You know, I can even put distortion on it if I want. Um, it definitely sounds. I did some fretless bass on a on a game yesterday, and it just sounded really cool. <laughs> Technically, I should be playing with these uh, these cow cow bone calf bone uh, picks. They used to use a feather. So the technique for you know Uh, uh, D G A. So I got one, four, five right here. I hit a G note and I can kind of, so I hit the D string and I kind of tune to that. Thank you, Scott Jacobs. My coffee. And then I hit the G, G string and then I can play on that one. And then I go to the A string, now I got the five chord. this thing such a weird pick you know and it's very thin you know me I like very thick picks uh, okay oh I'm sorry uh, let's see oh yeah oud is the father of the lute which is the father of the guitar so it's 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 not too unfamiliar so but anyway the tuning is um, D G A D G C so it's like, again, on the bottom, we've got the one, four, five, and on the top, we've got stacked fourths, which is nice because... Now, generally, you don't play chords on, like, I, it would be really hard to play a chord if I wanted a D, G, C, if I want... Might be 
kind of thank you, Lena. It might be tough to do the um, that's a D major chord. You know, it's it's hard to you know. I'm using a lot of times. I get um, when I'm using Logic, I uh, open up the tuner and I have it really big on one of my other screens, and that way, I, in the corner of my eye, I can always see if I'm in tune or not. It helps with slide, especially if I'm reading music or whatever. Um, it helps with when I'm doing weird effecty things, and it definitely helps with the fretless instruments. Like I said, I played I play a lot of oud. I played last year. I did a lot of oud on games. I haven't been asked yet this year. Um, but check out the music for Pathless by Austin Wintry. I did all the ouds and lute on that. I may have played a little guitar on it too. There's not any other guitar on it. It's just um, I'm working on something heavy metal for him this week. So we got some new stuff coming. That's another game I'm working on this week, totally unrelated to the three I'm doing today. So today I'm working on Apex Legends, so take a sip. And Watch Dogs. And then also a third game, I don't know what it is. It's some kind of, um, uh, they said Western, they wanted acoustic guitar and dobro. And I'm going, can, can you play dobro in G minor? I can play dobro in any key you want. But again, having a little tuner here is really handy because especially, you know, keep in mind these are nylon strings. So nylon strings, if you have a nylon string guitar, you know how long it takes for those strings to really get get into stay in tune when you put new ones on. So it's got a little Fishman pickup. And these top two strings really go, really go out of tune. So I'm keeping it out in my office right now so that I just make sure I'm always picking it up and tuning it. And uh, one thing, one thing that makes it a little bit easy is at the at the uh, neck where the neck joins the body. That's the that's a fifth. So if this is a D, that's an A basically. If this is a G, that's a D. If this is an A, that's an E. If this is a D, this is A. So there's a C, there's a G up here. And also know that in, in Middle Eastern music, um, they have notation for, you think we've got some crazy... Um, Oh, no, not Red Dead Redemption. I wish I was playing on that. That's actually, uh, that is uh, Gustavo Santaloy. I would love to work with Gustavo. Uh, he's a phenomenal composer. Um, but, yeah, he, I've watched some videos on YouTube of him composing, you know, and, and recording some of that. And he gets these really cool musicians in to do a lot of that music. But, yeah, I would love to play on that soundtrack. I have done some soundtracks that sure sound like it because that's a very, very popular uh, sound. It won a lot of awards in the last couple of years. So this is fretless. Yeah, there are no frets on this bad boy, which is great. It means that I can, I'm going to keep practicing with this, the, the pick from, from the U. He said, the cool thing was he sent me a whole leather pouch with a bunch of picks. So I've got a whole bunch of these now. That's pretty cool, right? Um, and I don't know if any of these are really thick. Maybe now. None of these are thick, so I'm not sure. You know, these are probably all the equivalent of Fender Thins. <laughs> so, um, that's definitely much softer, which is kind of cool. But with this instrument, compared to my standard oud, which has the big round back, it's this is a lot quieter. And I recorded both last night. Um, kind of experimented, came up with an EQ setting, boosted the bottom end a little bit on this one, and I got them sounding similar. And in fact, if anything, the more traditional oud that I have sounds a little squishier and a little more uneven across the board. This is a little bit more balanced. So re recording-wise, I think it's going to work. I was a little worried that, oh, you know, it's good for it's good for plugging in, but I don't really, you know, I, a lot of times when I get asked to play oud, it's going to be for more legit kind of stuff. Now see, this side of the pick is much thicker than 
feels like more resistant on than this side. So I probably use the fat end of the pick, which is maybe probably not right. So uh, let's see. Now uh, let's see. Oh, it's in the browser edit menu. I, I didn't see uh, Sam's. Oh, this is eleven strings. Although it has 12 um, <laughs> tuners. So that makes me think that the headstock was actually not made for an oud. <laughs> they, they just kind of worked with it. It's just kind of funny. Uh, like I said, it came from Istanbul. Um, but they have, in, in Middle Eastern music, they have notation for 54 notes per octave. So they have things that like sharp sign with one line across instead of two. And a sharp sign with three lines across instead of two, um, and so the one line across would be like, here's here's uh, D. Uh, so like here's C, G, A. So A sharp would be there. A with the three sharp would be there. A with the one sharp thing across would be there. So that I mean they do all the middle notes, and they're used to hearing that. They grow up all their life. They're hearing it. Um, they sing it. Uh, it's it's crazy. So hard to play with these picks. I'm already going out of tune, but that's good. I'm trying to stretch out these strings to get them ready to go. Anyway, so that's my new acquisition. I got this a couple days ago. And I don't think I have anything else coming right now. Um, I've got to order some more things. Uh, I'm working on the thing that I'm not allowed to talk about. Already used the 12 string mandolin on that. I used this on it, which I, you know, the, the uh, Bode Psaltery. I've been using this a lot. Uh, let's see, uh, John asking, how do you know where to play on the notes without frets? Is it by feel, knowledge of tones, notes you're trying to play, experience? Yeah, it's kind of all of those things. All, yeah, yeah, another sip. Uh, all of those things. It's hard. I mean, I, it's really not intuitive for me. It's very counterintuitive. And um, when I'm reading, um, when I'm reading uh, music on it, it's really hard. I, I, I would probably, I actually did a session where I went in and worked with the composer and it, it ended hor didn't end horribly, but it, he's never used me again. And I, you know, I told him that I, I, can you just send it to me and I'll play it. He goes, no, 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 I want to sit here. I want to, I want to uh, work with you on it. I want to get the everything right. He was very particular and it was very hard music and it was unplayable for me and became apparent. Had I been able to work on it from home, I probably would have been able to nail everything. But being able to sight read some crazy music on oud, it's not realistic. Especially if you've never, if they're not writing for oud, they don't realize that everything has to be D centric, G centric, A centric, um, if it's going to be more legit. And uh, I'm going to play in tune more, and that was really the struggle. Um, but that's okay. I, I, you know, I may work for that composer again. You never know. I work for tons of them. Um, it's very rare that I work for somebody and I don't work for them again. I usually give everybody in my business with what they need um, from me, but sometimes it doesn't happen. We've all been there. So no shame in that. Um, yes, it is. It's yeah. I'd have to kill you if I told you. So uh, once it's announced, then I can, uh, then I can tell you, but not until it's announced. 
and you'll be like, well, that was no big deal. It's just the way things are. Um, so I have to, I have to adhere to that because there are people watching this. <laughs> Believe it or not, they're probably not logging in here. They're not <laughs> commenting, but they're watching. So, um, okay. Edit in the menu bar and then select emojis and symbols. Oh, special characters type in music. Oh. Edit in the menu bar. Why are we getting more viewers now? <laughs> I finished the lesson. So all of you that are joining now, this is the lesson we did. So if you go back, I started about uh, 15 minutes in. I actually hit this, and about 60 minutes in, we were done. So about a 45-minute lesson to get through this chart of just talking about what it, you know, learning that. And we've done five of these now. So if you go back five lessons, you can learn the E string, uh, th three notes on the E string, three notes on the B string. Then you do both of them. And we learned some things like half notes, whole notes, ties, things like that. Then we started to do what's called dyads or two note chords. But I wanted you to start to see stacked notes and not be too afraid of them. And so that's what we did last week. And then this week we added the G string. So now we have three strings under our belt. And next week um, I will probably do more chords. We're going to do triads because now we have three strings. So we can create some triads. Um, so we'll do that. We'll probably have, you know, shapes that you're very familiar with, but you've never read them before. And that's one of the things is like, once you see a D minor shape on the music staff, you'll go, oh, a D minor chord. Oh, oh, that's D minor. Oh, oh, okay. It looks like, you know, it's like it starts to make sense. So many guitar players are lousy with theory because they didn't learn how to read music. And music theory is much easier to understand in the context of, of music notation. So... Um, let's see, um, oh, wild turkey feathers. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> for, for me to, yeah, I, I'm not sure, but like, I think in the old, the original thing they used were feathers for the picks for those. Uh, I read that somewhere. Um, yeah, I have a whole book of oud music, basic, basic oud tunes that I actually can sight read and everything. They're very basic songs, kind of like look like this kind of stuff. And um, uh, I used it, actually, I, w I did a uh, one of those um, kind of immersion feast, kind of a combination dinner theater thing for... Um, uh, Christmas thing. It was a um, uh, the, the inn, um, you know, with Jesus and Mary go to the inn and everything. So it was a feast happening at the inn and all the stuff's happening. We're like, you know, like you're you're eating and a kid, you know, a kid dressed as, you know, someone from the, uh, you know, time of Christ comes up and steals a roll off your plate or something, <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And there's centurion, you know, Roman centurions there. Uh, guards and stuff, and th things starts to stuff starts to play out around you during the whole meal, and they bring you another course, and a really cute idea. And so I was playing music in the background. I was like, you know, <laughs> like the court jester. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Did they make me wear a robe? I don't think so. It was funny. I think I just wore all black. They should have made me wear a robe. Take care, John. John's already gone. Oh, your dinner's ready. Oh, I know where you live. I haven't eaten yet today. I'm hungry, and I got work to do. Let me see if I got work. Oh, my goodness. I definitely have work. Um, uh, oh, okay. No, I guess not. Just the kids. I thought, I thought it was. All right. All right. So we're right at an hour and a half, which is pretty much where I've been stopping uh, as of late. We get through these things pretty quick. Like I said, next week we'll be doing triads. We'll be doing sex. So it'll be you'll get the three notes and then you'll play them together. And you'll get three notes and you'll play them together. So uh, I, hopefully it won't be too complex. I'll try to keep it simple for you. And um, uh, yeah, I'll, you know, I, it, Maybe a two pager. I may I may just do whole note or half note uh, whole notes, you know, so that you can really count two, three, four in the next note, two, three, four in the next note. Um, 
And there is a thing about reading chords. If you're doing something leading up to that chord, sometimes you leave the... Um, oh, oh, what was that instrument? That was an oud. Okay, that was an oud, which is the father of the lute, which is the father of the guitar, or mother, I don't think it matters. <laughs> uh, it looks like a mother, the <laughs> lute and the oud have to be, <laughs> look like a pregnant mama. So uh, I don't know if that helps. Yeah, everybody have, yeah, get back to the, I got to get back to the grindstone. I, I haven't looked, I'm, I, I got to pull up my, um, can download some files. Of course, I, I'm afraid to do that because then if I do that, um, it might slow down my. Let's see what we got though. Boom boom. Today, yep. Oh wow. Okay. We got a lot of files up here. Okay, so download. Yeah, sweet B. So we did that. Oh no, these are. Different. These are combat. Okay. Download. And then download. Oops. All right. Yeah, everybody have a good week, and uh, I will see you next Wednesday, Lord willing. Um, and uh, we'll continue our, our work on this. If by chance there's a week I can't be there, or if there's a week that I can do two, um, I may do that. But um, if, if there's a week I can't be there, I'll still try to create a lesson and get it up in time for you to work on um, and practice and start to read. Uh, I think that would be advantageous to us all. Um, oh, thank you, John. Oh, great. Uh, I'm so glad. That's That makes me happy, actually. I really, not just the money, but the fact that you're learning, that's more important to me. But I appreciate the, I appreciate the coinage, too. That helps. Oh, here, here it comes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so have your mix file. Ed. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. All right. So uh, the work has begun. I've got to, I've got to clock in. So I got to get some food and then I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm doing this once a week. Now I used to do it se seven days a week. When COVID hit, we were seven days a week. Then a while back we went to three days a week and now I'm just so busy right now. It's, and it's insane. It's been insane that I am down to one day a week. Um, and YouTube just isn't paying anything anymore. Hardly. They just cut, they cut my, uh, pay by about two thirds. So I'm making two thirds of what I was making at the peak of all this, but um, it's all good. It's all good. I'm not doing it necessarily for the money. I'm doing it so that when I die, that all that information is, isn't immediately gone. I know that sounds morbid, but it's it's there's a an Indian uh, a saying, an Indian from India, I think, a saying that says when a man dies and woman, you know, it's implied. Uh, I'm implying it when a when a man dies, a library burns to the ground. And it's very true. So I'm trying to get my library up on YouTube so that when I die, it doesn't burn to the ground, if that makes sense. Right? And interspersed in here are stories and stuff. So if my grandkids and kids want to watch me and when I'm long gone, then they can do that too. So, <laughs> again, I don't mean to be morbid, but it's all just part of life. Um. Oh, yeah, yeah, I saw a little bit of Gary. I saw a little bit of that bluegrass thing. It was cool. Yeah, I wish I could have watched more. You know, it's just been nonstop. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. Yeah, that was kind of – it gave me something to look forward to, too. Um, and um, uh, when uh, – like I said, I'm a people person, so to, to not be able to interact with people um, – when uh, when COVID hit was very difficult. So,
Um, let's see. All right, I'm getting a million. Oh, what was the name of the Bode instrument? It's a um, Bode Psaltery, I think. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I think I give you the link for the for the website you can get. It's not they're not expensive. Um, I I've been using it quite a bit. Mountainmademusic.com. Uh, in fact, I might order something else from him. I'd love to have him make me um, a very big another. Um, Dulcimer. This is not one he made. He made me a chromatic one. I'd like to get a big chromatic dulcimer that I can bow. Um, hold on. There we go. Oh, I got this tune way down to. So I've been using this a lot for for um, for some of the games I'm working on, and just to kind of create otherly otherworldly kind of places. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I will talk to you soon. Uh, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Okay, take care. Bye bye. God bless.